Uh, all right, so now welcome uh, everyone to the NLP class. And uh, uh, prior to beginning of the class, I actually get some feedback from students about A1 and A2. So uh, yeah, it seems like good news. Uh, everyone is doing well, well on A2, I guess. A2 is quite, uh, I would not say easy, but relatively easier, right? Um, <clears throat> but A1 can be very confusing. Right, because it's your first, uh, and uh, there's so many ways you can do the same thing, right? But anyway, yeah, uh, I'm very happy that you guys enjoyed our assignment, and uh, yeah, I think uh, this week A3 will be also very fun, right? Great. Uh, so today, um, the topic is uh, attention, and also the machine translation, right? So we will hit uh, two birds in one stone. So firstly, we're gonna study about uh, <clears throat> what is actually uh, mach machine translation, and then um, and we'll try to link the concept to attention, right? And uh, which will help you understand uh, uh, this uh, advanced technique. Uh, everyone who are in deep learning must understand attention, because attention is a very basic idea that is proposed around. Uh, that is proposed around uh, 2015, right? So, so attention, uh, to give you just a preview, uh, usually in this uh, RNN, you will take the last hidden state, right? And send it into a linear layer uh, and then let it predict something, right? But the question is, because you are taking the last hidden states, it lost a lot of, probably lost a lot of information in the past, right? So the question is, uh, how do we get uh, use the past information? Well, someone proposed, instead of taking the last hidden states, maybe we can take a mean, right? The mean of the hidden state and send to a linear layer, right? That can be also very possible. But you're taking the mean, it's basically saying that all the words is, very important to predict something we want to predict, right? So what is better is the, the next way is whatever you want to do, right? Whatever you want to do, right? For example, you want to uh, translate some sentence, right? Uh, maybe uh, I in I mean, my Thai is not exactly correct and the handwriting is very bad, uh, but but we can actually say, uh, I go eat rice, right? And here there's only three box and actually I should write, uh, written uh, uh, four box. And every time uh, <clears throat> I, I am at this state, I need to decode this one, right? Correct? So what I can do is I can try to find the relationship between this and this, right? And see that, hey, oh, if I want to decode this word home, I need a lot of information from this token, right? Maybe like 90%, right? And how about if I want to decode this one, is this guy important? I, I check and it's like, not so important, let's say 5%. By the way, the computers don't know that it should be 100% simply because uh, uh, it's, it's not possible. And maybe we can also check uh, how much we want uh, to, to, to predict that, how important is E to, to decode home, right? And maybe we found it is 3%, right? And et cetera, right? And the rest of this is maybe 2%, right? So then, um, so we, we call this, we call this chunk, um, attention, right? So what does this attention here mean? Attention here means that if you want to decode OM, you need to pay attention to the first word, 90% of that, right? So what, once we know that, it's super easy, right? We should not take the mean anymore, right? The mean is silly, 
because we already know that we should take 90% of the first guy, right? So how do we do that? Well, very simple, 90% multiply with the first hidden state plus 5% multiply with the second hidden state plus 3% multiply with the third hidden state plus 2% multiply with the last hidden state, right? Then you will get the final hidden state and then you send to your linear layer, correct? In this way, it's much, much better, much effective, right? So, so this is like a preview for you, what is attention? And this is proposed in 2015, right? And this is not the same as transformer, but transformer basically just incorporates this idea too, right? So you can see that attention mechanisms is uh, very, very powerful, right? Uh, <clears throat> and today my class will also link with, with, um, with another concept and that is a machine translation, right? And uh, machine translation is another task that uh, because uh, by now, I think the first task you guys actually learn is language model, right? And language model is basically just a decoder, right? What do I mean by decoder? Decoder means uh, you just send in information and then it just decode the, the next word, right? So it could be I, I uh, could be start, and then I, and then I, and then eat, and then eat, uh, rise, and then etc. right? So this is language model, right? You, you predict the next token, right? And it's purely decoder, right? But today, we can learn a, another task, right? MT, which is machine translation, and uh, the architecture is encoder plus decoder. Right, and 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 uh, what what do I mean by encoder? Right, encoder is basically adding another, on, right? Uh, so for example, maybe you want to translate into I eat rice, maybe from in cow, right? And there's no decoding, no decoding. There's no decoding. That's why it's called encoder, right? That is, it takes in the input. This is called encoder, encoder, right? The reason why we call this encoder is because it does not output anything. It just take in the input and then encode the final hidden states and send to the decoder in which the decoder, the purpose of the decoder is to decode the the words that we wanted to output, right? So machine translation, the architecture is encoder plus a decoder, right? Uh, there are many tasks that use this same architecture, right? Uh, it, so so you can see that, for example, uh, uh, a very simple example which use this architecture is uh, summarization, right? And uh, what else? Uh, paraphrasing. Right, and uh, yeah, maybe that is a very good example, right? In which you have a pair of sentence input, you encode it. You don't want to do anything with it. You don't output anything. You just want to understand what is this sentence mean, get the final hidden states, and then send to the decoder to understand that, okay, this sentence is paired with this sentence, right? So in summarization, the encoder could be the long document, right? The long document. And the output could be the short sentence, right? For paraphrasing, it could be one sentence to another sentence, right? So this, uh, this encoder decoder architecture is a very, very famous uh, architecture that can work for many, many tasks. In fact, it's so popular that we have a name for this uh, architecture and we call this 
this uh, encoder decoder call sequence to sequence, or in short, seek to seek. Right. So yeah, I think uh, today we have a lot to learn. We have uh, attention and we have a uh, machine translation that those are the two things that we're gonna learn uh, today. So this is a very brief preview. And uh, for those who just came and you may not catch up uh, what I have taught, don't worry. Uh, we, everything I said is in the, in the slide, right? Uh, it's all in the slide, right? But this is, I, I write this preview just for everyone to prepare your brain, right? What is coming, right? Great. <clears throat> um, so, so today, uh, where are we? So today we are right here, right? LSTM with attention, right? And uh, we are actually in the machine translation right here, right? And so those are the things uh, currently we are at. So the, firstly, let's uh, introduce the task of machine translation and why do check the uh, use machine translation uh, as a like, main task today? Simply because uh, machine translation have a very similar tasks, share the same schema with many tasks. So let's see what is machine translation. According to the definition, we have a source language X. Um, deep learning much spot. And this is written in German. And this is the input sentence. And we want to decode it into deep learning spot, English, right? But I don't want you to see this as a machine translating only, right? I want you to see as a big picture. That is, this can be anything, right? This problem is actually can be generalized to be, could be a long document. And then, short sentence, right? This is basically summarization, exactly, right? This could be uh, one sentence, like I am chill chilling, right? And uh, maybe why is another sentence and maybe make it more formal, I am uh, relaxing, relax. I'm not sure how to make it formal, but maybe you change the style, right? Maybe you can see this structure, source sentence and target sentence is can, can be many tasks, right? This can be machine translation. This task is called paraphrasing, right? So, uh, so I want you to see as a big picture, not only say, oh, what I'm going to talk to you today only apply to machine translation. All right, and uh, the architecture that uh, is so famous and we call this sequence to sequence model, right? Also known as sequence to sequence and it involves two RNN. Basically, if we have, it will always look like this RNN and we call this encoder. And we have another RNN and this is called decoder. Right, it will always look like this, right? Um, and the encoder don't output anything, but what we want from the encoder is basically the final hidden states. And, but the decoder is the actual one that actually output what we want, right? So this is uh, uh, the architecture. One thing I want to say is that this RNN, if you guys not aware already is this can basically, if vanilla, we call this RNN, right? But there's so many variants that we can refer to RNN, LSTM, GRU, right? And not, and it can be multi-layer, it can be bi-directional, right? So, so the, this are the uh, problem framing of uh, neural machine translation. You guys okay, right? Okay, great. Uh, I go a little bit fast because I have many slides, right? And, and I don't want to 
uh, talk too much on the basic things. Okay, great. So the, this is exactly uh, how the architecture looks like. We have an encoder, it can be LSTM GRU, and the input is deep learning much spa. And uh, you can see that the encoder, we name it encoder is simply because it's not outputting anything, right? And how about a decoder? Decoder, the responsibility of the decoder is take in the hidden states, final hidden states, or whatever the mean hidden states from the encoder, and try to decode what is it, right? And, and here in this picture is in the inference mode. So when I say inference mode is we are not training. So how do we keep printing the next word in the inference mode? Very simple, we always start with a start token. We get one word, we take the argmax, or maybe it's multinomial uh, sampling. We take this one to the next, we predict, we do some sample sampling or argmax, uh, auto-regressively do this. So this is in inference mode, right? And when do we stop? We stop when we meet a N token, right? So this picture is in inference mode. Now, uh, so right here, I want to say that sequence to sequence is super versatile, right? It's not only for machine translation, it can be for summarization, it can be for fixing grammar, it can be for paraphrasing. So just now I'm talking about inference, right? Like, like in, in an encoder decoder uh, structure, how do we enter inference? How about uh, training? It's basically the same as what you guys learned in already in language modeling, right? Because if, if the decoder is trained in that way, that would be the way too to train here, right? So here, the loss function is simply, you force the model to be able to predict the next word that you assign, right? So given a start, it should predict deep. If it, it, if it does not predict deep, you, that is a loss J1, right? And deep should predict learning, that is J2. Learning should predict ease, that is J3, et cetera, et cetera, right? And then you, the, the sum of loss is basically average, uh, is basically taking the average of the sum of the loss. Right? So it's a very, very uh, straightforward. <clears throat> right, and of course, uh, uh, if you guys cannot see that already, that is uh, it's very possible to be multi-layer too. Now, um, I need to touch on some very important topic, and that is uh, beam search, right? So in uh, during in decoding, right? So I'm here, I'm talking about decoding, right? Usually we can do an argmax, right? And uh, I also teach you a very simple technique is called multinomial sampling, right? And, but the question is, uh, is the Anna, any other way? And that, the answer is yes, it's called beam search. Beam search, right? And uh, basically the, 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 the thesis is that if you simply up max and print the next word, right? You will always get the same sentence and it won't work for our chatbot because your chatbot is always speak the same thing, right? So the question is uh, how do we how do we make it more versatile, more diverse, more interesting, right? And we have one way and that is called beam search. Um, but let me just put some disclaimer before uh, you guys learn this, right? Um, okay, let me explain this technique first and then I will talk about whether people are still using beam search right now, right? And I gotta skip all this uh, slide because I know you guys don't like me to talk a lot about text, but I prepare you uh, a slide, right? So I have a start button, all right? And so, so this is my, let's say, 
uh, I take in some hidden states. You need to imagine that I already take in some hidden states, all right? This is the decoding part, all right? There's already some encoder part that I skip, all right? And I, there's a, some parameters that I need to set, all right? First is uh, beam search, the beam size, and k equal to two, all right? So this beam size uh, defines the numbers of parallel search, right? Of course, you don't understand. Right now, it's fine. Once you see my picture, it will be fine. I also have, uh, uh, in, later on, you will see my uh, picture, have something called blue numbers. And uh, basically, it's the score, right? And of course, higher, better. Higher better, all right? And of course we want to get the higher better one, but you have to imagine that maybe I have, this is very high probability and this is low probability, correct? But we never know that maybe this low, the next word is super high, right? Right, and the next word is maybe lower. So maybe the sum of probabilities, this can win over this one, right? So you can see that the, the proposal of beam search is that, hey, can we maintain a long-term uh, uh, viewing of the final sentence and see whether which sentence actually give me the sum of the highest probabilities, right? Not only the greedy next token, right? So that is something that uh, interesting on that. By the way, if I go too fast, you let me know, all right? Okay. Uh, huh. All right, so what is the next thing we have? Uh, number of required high The next one we have is number of required hypothesis n equal to three, right? So what does that mean? This is how many sentences I want. How many sentences I want, right? And basically what I'm trying to say is that through this process, I want three sentences, okay? After the final output, I want three sentences. All right, so, so that is uh, uh, what I want from this process of beam search, All right? So great. Uh, okay, let me be sure that you guys are not confused. Everything here is done during training or inference. Everything I talked right here is done training or inference. Which mode I'm talking about? Inference, okay? In training, there's only one way that is pausing, right? But in inference, there are so many ways, right? In inference, right? You can do argmax, which sucks, but it's worked well for machine translation or very fixed thing. You can do multinomial sampling, right? Actually, this way is still the most preferred way, even until today. Uh, but Currently, I'm proposing another way called beam search, which is a very complicated, sounds like complicated, but it's not complicated once you see my picture, right? So just to make sure that you guys are not confused that is this, how does it related to training? Because it's not training, it's inference. All right. So we got this uh, start button and uh, I got, let me just hide this window. Okay, if I close this, maybe I lost something. Okay, I should not close it, right? But anyway, uh, I should keep my pen. Okay, great. So based on the start, I got two words. Deep and he. Where does this two word come from? 
because I specify the beam size, how much, what is the beam size I specify, guys? Two. So when I say beam size equal to two, it will give me the two highest probability work. The next work with the highest probability, and that is Deep and he. Who gave me the, the model, right? Saying that even the, the start, there are two words with the highest probability as the next word, and that is deep and star and he. And for those who don't understand this notation, that is uh, uh, what is the probability of deep given start, right? And uh, basically, this is basically the probability, and we just apply log because simply because it's stable, right? So I think I should not say that anymore, right? Okay, great. Now, Let's move on. Okay. And I just want to print out something for you. You notice that the, probab the log probability is uh, 0 0.7 and uh, minus 0 0.9. Okay. And uh, all right. So, uh, just to keep you guys not confused, minus 0 0.7 and minus 0 0.9, which one has higher probability? Minus 0 0.7, okay? So for those uh, not confused, minus 0 0.7 has a higher probability. Why minus? Why there's a minus? How come probability can be minus? It's basic thing. What, how come my probability has minus? Because I apply logarithm, okay? So don't be confused. If, if, because I apply logarithm, minus doesn't mean minus, okay? It, it's actual probability, but when I apply logarithm, some lower number become minus, some very high number become positive, okay? But still, it's a, still a probability, but they are still relatively okay, okay? Great. So now, based on deep, I generate two search, right? because my, high, my beam size is two. And he also generate two words, uh, was and eat, right? And where they come from, they are from the highest probability after deep, right? So now, how do I calculate the probability of deep learning? Well, it's very simple. You need to take a look. The probability of deep learning is basically the probability of learning given start and deep. Right, and together with the probability of minus zero point seven, which comes from here. All right, so the probability actually stack up, and the final probability is basically minus one point seven, and we can do the same. And we got minus two point nine, minus one point six, and minus one point eight. Now, at this stage, some of you will probably ask me, where does this number come from? And I have to say again, where does this number come from? This example, right? It's my example, so don't be confused, all right? But there's this kind of student who like to check you, where do you get this number? It's my example, okay? Okay, great. Now, based on these four probabilities, which are the, which are the highest uh, uh, probability currently? Learning and was. Correct? I bye bye, I say bye bye to blue and eat. Okay? I say bye bye. Why I say bye bye? Because I told you already my beam size is two. I will only search two branch. Okay? I will only maintain two branch. Yep. Now, based on that learning, I got ease and algorithms. Uh, continue was, I got gone and born. Again, I only pick the highest two probability, right? And that is ease and born. You may say, Chucky, I can keep going, right? When do I stop? Okay. There are two ways I can stop. Maybe I say, if, if I have 10 tokens, that is the maximum tokens I want, I stop. Or I can say, it will stop when I, it reach the end token, right? So there are two ways I can end. First is maximum tokens, 
Number two is it, what, what did I say? It reached the end token, all right? It reached the token. Great. So now, uh, I'm still going. It doesn't stop. You may say, check it, why you don't stop? Simply because I still have space, okay? Um, but I want you to, actually, I, for those who are very smart, you already see the problem. You can see that the longer sentence will always have lower probability than the shorter sentence, right? You can see that that is a little bit problem, right? That you can see that shorter sentence will always be preferred over longer sentence because the shorter sentence will always have higher probability than the longer sentence, right? Now, uh, finally, I hit N, right? I hit N, right? This is my first sentence. You got it? I already got my first sentence. Deep learning is fun. This is my first sentence. And this could be my sentence that I will write to the user, right? Oh, because I reached the end, I can take two more, right? Right, now I don't need to, so I can start with width, and then I have two more here, right? I have two more here, right? So I start with, I, I continue. It does not need to be up, right? It does not need to be in this branch. I, based on this N, A, N, I just take the one that is highest probability. Right, so it does not need to be always top one should have one and the bottom one should have one. Oh, no, it, I just take the highest probability. Um, so he was born with a and pain, right? It's so funny. And then I continue. Right, and okay, I got another sentence, right? He was born with pain. Right? So that is the second sentence. Second sentence. Um, why I am still searching? Why I'm still searching Sky and If? Simply because I told my program that I want how many sentences? I want three sentences. Okay? So I keep looking, right? And always I maintain two branch, sky and gift, right? And you, you can see that uh, things are getting, and then hopefully it ends, right? And uh, okay, uh, that's it, right? So now I stop. Right, so the third one is, uh, okay, the color will be a little bit confusing, so I can I use pink. Okay, I should not use pink, maybe red, right? So the first sentence is, uh, he was born with a uh, sky, <laughs> okay? So, so this is from, I think this is from Harry Potter, right? Right, so I got three sentences. Now, once I got three sentences, which sentence I will output to this user? There are two ways also. One way is highest probability of this three sentence. So what is the probability of the first sentence? The probability of the first sentence is, okay, which color I should use? I'm out of color already, okay, maybe an orange. The first probability is minus 4.5. The second sentence is minus 6.1. Right? The third sentence is minus 4.6. So based on this three sentence, which one has the highest probability? Deep learning is fun, right? Right? So in that case, based on that, I will output deep learning is fun. Right? Or I think you guys uh, can already get the trick, right? How ChatGPT can do also. That is, it just random, randomly proof, right? Because we can trust that through this process, we already top 
get the top K, right? Uh, when I say top K sentence, it just basically means uh, these are the top three. So randomly pick any of them. Also, it's a good bet, right? So you can pick randomly one of them and it will be good, right? But, okay, randomly pick is probably, I would say you can get a lot of fun, but uh, how about we look at this more, highest probability, right? You can see that usually longer sentence has a lower probability, am I right? Right? Um, of course, it's not always in this case, but you can see that the longer it is, the lower probability, right? So when you do this highest probability, the shorter sentence will always be fake. Am I right? Right. So how do we do that? I'm not sure I have in the next slide, but the idea is you can do something like this. You can do minus 4.5 divided by the length of the sentence. So length of sentence is uh, one, two, three, four, five, right? So it could be five. Compare with minus 4.6 divided by the length, right? The length is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? Versus minus 6.1 divided by one, two, three, four, five, six. Did I do that? Okay, great, six. So if you do the math correctly, which one has the highest probability? Help me. The middle one, right? It's very clear that the middle one averagely gives you the highest probability, right? So if you use the third way that I did not actually do, set here, that is uh, same as one, but penalize length, penalize length, Uh, then uh, you will choose the second one, not the first one. All right. So those are uh, what we can utilize uh, with Beam Search. Great. I would just talk about one more slide, and then I will let you guys take a break. Maybe I take some questions from your friends, and then we can come back. All right. I know this is uh, a lot for those who are not familiar with this approach. Okay, great. So we have, oh, before I go to the next slide, I don't even remember what is that, right? Next slide. Is still people using Beam Search, you think? Okay, so, so we can re delete this slide. I mean, not delete this slide, delete everything. So in inference, during inference, how many ways we can inference? Number one, half max. Number two, yeah, multinom multinomial sampling. Actually, multinomial, okay? Not multi. And three is beam search. Beam search. And everything here is uh, inference. Which way you think is probably the, the way ChatGPT do? Exact. So ChatGPT is very sure. By the way, no one know how they do, okay? They don't tell us, right? but I'm very confident is number two. So what is, I think we don't need to ask why number one, no one use, right? Because number one is like, it does not make sense, right? Your sentence will always be like rigid. Why no one use number three? I think you guys can guess. Like for those who are from computer science, you can tell me. Expensive to compute, right? Simply that, right? You, you can see that. You do this, compute, branch, compute, branch, right? And all of this is so computationally expensive, right? But you compare to the second approach, no no computation, right? Just chup, 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 right? And then we can do this plus reinforcement learning, right? Just make it sample, print it to the user. The user say bad sentence. Pick, 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 it will be better, right? Instead of using beam searches, which is very, computationally expensive, right? But even though that, I am responsible to, to teach you this technique because no one knows that maybe come back next year, right? Who knows? All right, so that is something that uh, may not be very clear in the society, but I told you anyway. Um, 
So here is uh, probably the, give me one second, how many slides I have about BIM search and then we can, okay, just one more slide. Um, so, yep. So basically I already said everything here, right? So you guys can take a look, normalize by length, right? Finish, okay, great. So that I think we complete one very important topic. Why not we uh, take a rest for a few minutes? Let's say 10 minutes and then uh, we come back and continue attention, right? Yep, see you guys.